I would like you to tell me about uh, your first relation to art and your father collector and how it, how it influenced your mind as a collector, a special collector, yeah. challenging one. Well, you know, of course, if you, if you imagine a home with extraordinary paintings all around it, attached to a gallery with even more extraordinary paintings, um, one would think that it was art that might have influenced me in the beginning, but it wasn't. It was the people that my father had around him. He was a catalyst of conversations that were beyond anybody's imagination, and he wasn't an academic. Indeed, I'm not an academic. so. Um, I could understand a great deal what was being said at table, even as a young person. And conversations fueled by a bit of alcohol and good food, you know, became very animated with my father's company. And where um, was it? It was always in the Villa Favorita. I mean, we, 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 when, when he had guests, he often, you know, invited me to join at all ages. You know, I've suffered from a very young age. I started probably being attracted to the art world because I sensed that there was an interesting group of people that sort of circulated and orbited around and within the art world. And of course, in those days, they were very different people than you have today. We have a completely changed art world. And uh, in fact, I'm taking a year off. My This is a fresh news. I haven't told anybody but you. It's true um, that I'm taking a year off TBA 21 to be able to focus on a book about my father and this whole history because so many of the people that I remember from that time and I realized how important it was for me that as an influence mm -hmm. that are still alive that I still wow. want to talk to before they disappear. Who are they? There was a Lord Gary, um, there, there was Norman Rosenthal, I mean, Simon de Puri, of course, there was Marco Grassi, there was Ula Dreyfus, you know, there were all the museum directors in the States, uh, Shapiro, who was a director of LACMA at the time, and some of the curators, Stephanie Barron, who talked about my father endlessly, and he spent obviously days and days and days with her. And, you know, he started collecting American art, so America became really important. All these people that are focused around, I have a list of about 12 that I want to talk to, and of course those 12 will lead to others. And I have the entire archive of the foundation and the Tissen collection to go through, so I know what my father was buying, and he just sort of went into passionately about Asian art or impressionist art or modern art, and then it was American art. So he had these moments where people also had influence over him, and who were those people, and who were the dealers, at the time that mattered and it was kind of interesting to see the history of how when he decided to go to the Soviet Union with his collection because there's the height of the Berlin, of, the, of the, the Cold War and you had Brezhnev and Reagan era where those two sides never spoke to one another and I learned through that project where he basically lent I think at the time it was 30 million dollars worth of paintings into the Soviet Union without an insurance policy. The insurance policy being a loan of $30 million worth of paintings back. And some point in the border of the Ukraine, which at the time you'll remember was the Soviet Union, there was a sort of James Bond moment where I can just always visualize my father running down the top of a train with a blow tie on, sort of like um, like any one of the James, like, I suppose at the time, it would be Sean Connery, who would have just sort of in an exchange of prisoners between the Soviet Union and the Americans, you know, some kind of moment where art crossed those borders and redefined a, a sort of new type moment and era of openness and exchange. And how did art and culture sort of play that vital role in breaking down those prejudices and those boundaries that were really quite, so, you know, there was an arms race at the time. Mm. They were pointing increasingly large nuclear warheads at each other. So, you know, to be able to do something like that and to, against all odds and against everybody's advice, you know, everybody told my father, whatever, don't even think about it. He sent some of his most important paintings of his collection there. Where? to the Soviet Union, to the museums, to the Hermitage Museum, to the Pushkin. He then insisted, well, if we're going to do this, then let's do it also in Novosibirsk. He sent it also to Tallinn. He went to Kiev. We went to the opening of his collection in Kiev as well. And, you know, this this also really left a very impressive 
memory in my mind in terms of how art can make a difference. But know? why do you think he did that with such a risk? Because he, 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 like I, you know, just didn't want to, I mean, now I, I'm confronted with climate change, you know, this is something I want to address. But at the time, the Cold War was the only thing anybody ever talked about. And we knew because he also, don't forget, he has a very strong Hungarian heart, my father. So we traveled a lot to Hungary, for instance, and that was behind the, 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 the Iron Curtain. So all of the traveling to Tallinn and to Estonia and to Ukraine at the time. And of course we traveled to St. Petersburg to see the Hermitage and what anybody who loved art had to travel to that part of the world to sort mm. of experience it. And I think the idea that you can break down those prejudices and those cliches that were actually governing our politic of the time um, and, you know, participating in what was just a sort of strange word nobody had ever heard called perestroika. And he inspired all about that. Early 80s, you know, how did he do that in the early 80s? And he met Brezhnev, you know, he actually met Brezhnev personally because the problem was is that the Minister of Culture of the then Soviet Union was not in a position to allow the export of paintings of the Soviet collections without a special permit from the president, from, from, you know, Brezhnev himself. So they had a meeting with Brezhnev to sort of allow this exchange to happen. I mean, it doesn't get higher. You know, you don't, my father was just a totally visionary and he loved to do things that were out of the ordinary. And he was a pioneer in many respects. And, you know, and he kicked ass, you know, and that's <laughs> something I like doing. You know, well, I'm, I'm, 